is Scott Johnson, and I am going to be talking to you about the evolution of the data and storage and APIs and how that's changed the gaming experience. So first, a little bit about myself, if my webcam isn't working, that is a picture of me on the right. Uh, my name is Scott Johnson. Uh, I used to, or I still do, but I love playing video games competitive, competitively. I used to be one of the top five elemental shamans in World of Warcraft for about two expansions. I've been diamond in League of Legends, in both Summoner's Rift and also in the team fight tactics mode and ranked. And I was also in the top 100 players on Player Unknown's Battlegrounds on the North American server. Besides playing video games, some of my hobbies include weightlifting. As you can see on the right, there's a picture of me at the Spartan Sprint, which is kind of a obstacle race, which also includes a lot of tests of strength. Um, I also really enjoy backpacking and the outdoors and listening to music. Uh, I'm currently working on my master's in economics, uh, my master's of science. So I'm planning on a thesis that applies sports economic theory to the world of esports, as gaming is one of my passions. And also because of that analysis or that love of like data, I am really interested in machine learning and data analysis. So that's kind of why I wanted to choose to talk about APIs. So, you know, about 30 years ago, you know, when video games were just starting to take hold in the house, it was such a different world than what it is today. Uh, you could like you could only play with people that were right next to you. You didn't have the internet to get onto, and the uh, storage was just not there. If you took the 40 million sales of the Super Mario cartridge, which only houses about 37 kilobytes of storage, and you combined all that storage into one place, that would only let you uh, install about nine copies of the latest Call of Duty game, which takes up about 220 gigabytes. So that's a huge disparity in data you can see going from old games to new games. If you were stuck or you had a problem or you wanted to maybe get better at a game, really the only two ways of doing it was either just playing and putting countless hours in and trying to figure out what you could do better, or you could be using one of these old strategy guide books and try and rifle through them and study them and see, you know, see what you could learn from them. I don't know if anyone here has experienced using these, but these were one of my favorite things uh, studying when I was a kid. And if you didn't have these books or you wanted maybe customized solutions or customized advice to your situation, it was really hard besides asking your group of friends to, for um, advice. You didn't really have anywhere else you could go to without the internet. One like, customized solution that existed back in the day, at least in America, was Nintendo had this thing called Powerline to the Pros, where you could call these people on your phone and these people would be able to help you and answer maybe any problems you had. And... When you were looking at calling the site or like in the paper, they had like profiles of any game counselor that you were like that they had. And then you could figure out kind of like a dating profile, which game counselor was going to help you get better at the game you wanted. And how are these people um, getting the data or being able to help you through your problems? They just had binders with pages and pages of data with every single map printed out. And they would have to try and rifle through and try and find where you were at and try and give you advice based on just these small printouts or snapshots of the levels. Since then, though, lots has changed. Obviously, you know, cell phones, internet, data, there's been the world now from 30 years ago is completely different. So about the increase of storage, in 2002 alone, a study by Berkeley found that around five exabytes of new data was produced. And five exabytes is about five billion gigabytes for people who don't know what that is. And last year alone, around one zettabyte of new data was produced and stored. And that's around 1,000 exabytes. So you can see from year to year, the amount is going to keep growing exponentially as we keep housing more data and we keep realizing the value of data and how we can use it. Um, we're trying to make more and more storage to store all that data. And along with the increase in storage, um, internet uh, access and speeds are continuing to rise. Now around over 4 billion people have access to the internet and that number is only going to increase when things like Starlink satellites are online and so more people are going to have access to the internet. And people's uh, average connection speed is around 43 megabits per second. So we can actually access quite a bit of data from the internet at fast speeds now. And more uh, the way that's changed, the way that internet speeds have changed and gaming uh, now online on YouTube, you can go and you can see playthroughs of any game you want to. You can see multiple playthroughs and you can see how from start to finish how people play. On Reddit and Discord, you can find communities for your favorite game and you can interact with people or talk with people there or try and get customized advice from your solutions. No longer do you have to call someone and try and see if they can look through a binder to find the right page for you. 
you're going to be able to access someone's experience and see what they did in that same situation. And finally, Twitch, which I don't know how many of you know, but it's a live streaming site where you can also find communities centered around a person playing a game or a set of games. And you can try and connect with people that share the love of your same games as well. And more importantly, um, from this increase in internet speeds and increase in data has been APIs and the increase in uh, companies allowing to access the data that they're collecting about their games. So what does API stand for? It stands for Application Programming Interface. And for the purposes of my talk, it's essentially a portal or basically a hole that companies allow users to access certain parts of data about the game. So what games do have APIs? Um, pretty much every popular game nowadays is gonna have APIs, Fortnite, Escape from Tarkov, Hearthstone, League of Legends, Dota 2, uh, the newest Call of Duty game. Uh, all of these have very robust APIs that allow you to access a lot of data, but really most games nowadays will at least let users access some small amount of data as well. So what can you access with APIs? What kind of data are companies allowing you to see? Uh, in Blizzard's card battling game Hearthstone, you can look at things such as class win rate. In a popular MOBA game, League of Legends, you can access complete match history for a player and you can see player stats for everyone inside of that match. Um, Fortnite, which is a first person shooter battle royale developed by Epic Games. You can look at KDA, which stands for the number of kills, deaths, and assists. You can look at the number of wins or even the people you played with. And in an online RPG, World of Warcraft produced by Blizzard, you can even get access to everything that's happening in real time in combat. And you can calculate the damage your character is dealing every second. And you also have access to knowing what kind of battle events are happening as well. So for my project, I'm going to do a quick demo to show you kind of how you can use data from APIs and how you can kind of get started for accessing these data and building an app around data from APIs. And for my project, I'm going to be using the League of Legends API produced by Riot Games. And so let's get into the demo. So first, if you were interested in going and going, uh, you wanted to go to the website to see what they had, we'll move over. And then you would have to go to the developer portal. So here we can see we're at developer.riotgames.com. It's free to sign up. All you have to do is make an account and you get instant access to the API. And they have very extensive documentation on their website about the whole API. So you can scroll through. As you can see on the right here, there's so much data that you, it's very well documented, very easy. If you're curious if you can access something, you can look through here and find it. And then get onto the APIs. If you just click on the API page, we're taken to a list of all of the endpoints or places that we can access data. And you can see everything that is available to you. So for example, if I click on this match endpoint, we can see you can get match by match ID, get match lists for games played on given account ID and platform ID and filtered. And there's just more and more things. So I decided I wanted to build an app for over the weekend to kind of show you what you can do with this kind of data. And so I took four APIs from this, uh, four endpoints from this API, and I built just a quick um, North American solo du duo queue ranked analysis app. So essentially what this will do is let us uh, pull up our own matches and then see what we can maybe have done better in some matches or try and figure out what points we could have improved on to try and become a better player. So here you type in your summoner name. I don't have so much to play anymore. So I'm going to use my friend Rhinoceros's account. And then we want to filter by a champion because we want to look at how you are performing on a certain champion to try and improve maybe performance on just one specific champion. So I know he loves to play a lot of Jinx and we'll search and it takes just a minute for it to load up because we're actually making 12 API calls or 12 requests for data to get the cards that I'm planning on loading and the cards load. And so now we can see here some cards with kind of ma match summary for each match with some sort of information like date of the match. Uh, match ID, whether they won or lost, which is also color coded here by the blue or red, as you can see, gold earned, their KDA, which again is kill deaths and assists, and then the CS, which stands for creep score or minions killed. And this is essentially how you gain gold and how you gain power in this game. So we're looking to improve. So we probably want to look at a loss 
So see what we could have done better to maybe turn that loss into a win. So let's choose maybe this one from a few months ago. So if we tap on this, I've also made additional data where it then takes that match and it asks the API again for detailed information about that match that's happening in every minute and seeing what we can gain from there. So here we have two graphs, gold gained and minions killed. And these graphs are usually going to mimic each other pretty closely because as you do kill minions, that is the main way of getting gold. But what we would be looking for maybe just from the simple kind of app would be flat points in the app or flat points on the line. Because every minute you're always trying to get more powerful, any time that these lines are going flat means that you're maybe not becoming as powerful as you could be because you're not gaining as much gold as you need. So we can see here between 12 and 14 minutes, we actually didn't kill any minions. And then here again, there's another like two, three minute stretch where that's not happening. So from here, I could maybe go to the replays of the matches and go to those timelines and see what's happening and see kind of think about how I could change or how I could make decisions better to maybe for the next time that happens. So that's kind of what my app does. Um, I would like to do more with the app, like add more graphs, or if I could make API, more API calls, I would like to add averages so that you can compare your gold gained compared to people around your same skill. But unfortunately, I only have a hobby developer key and they kind of limit the amount of requests that you can do. So let's go back to the presentation. Great. So for this app, I just used four technologies. Um, React was used for the front end for the developing, for the looks of the website. Um, I used Node.js and Express.js for hosting the server to interface between the API and my front end. And then Canvas.js was used to create the charts that you saw. And finally, this last one is Material UI, which is a, just a set of components that uh, look nice. So it's just used for styling on my website to make a more professional looking website qu uh, quicker. So kind of you can understand maybe what you can do with APIs, but how have they changed gaming or why, why are these such a big deal? So now compared to maybe 30 years ago, I think research is as if not more important as playing the game. You can gain much more experience through maybe 10 minutes of researching or 20 minutes of researching than you could hope to gain in hours and hours of playing. And so I'm going to show a couple APIs that people use that I think really demonstrate that. So first, this is a API or website app called ProBuilds, which is for League of Legends. This gains or this shows match data played by pro players in the game. So these players are playing the game most efficiently. They're at, the top, they're at the top level and they have analysts feeding them data even. So they're making what we can assume to be optimal choices. And now with this website, you gain instant access to all of their research as well. So let's say I was a top player in League of Legends. I could click the top button here and it brings a list matches of people who play uh, famous top laners or professional top laners. And we can see what they're playing right now to see what's currently strong. And immediately I can see six of the same champion being played just in the last 10 matches. So I, this champion is Camille. And because of that, I can assume that Camille is a really strong champion. And if I'm playing top lane, I should probably learn this pick because people are really, uh, it's becoming very popular. It's very strong. And we can, we always want to try and make optimal choices when we're playing. And so if I want to kind of gain more information than just what's currently strong, you can click on one of these matches and it'll bring you a detailed breakdown of the game. And you can see exactly what order pros are buying items in. And that's the efficient way where their stats are increasing at the most efficient levels. And you can also see what order they're leveling their skills into down here and down here. And that finally at the bottom, you can see um, what runes or what um, additional abilities they're choosing to make their champions as strong as possible. And for an example of another game, uh, for Hearthstone, which is the card battler by Blizzard Entertainment, we have hsreplay.net. And on the front page, you can immediately see um, which classes are playing strongest, but more important than just classes. Oh, let me change the pointer here. That might be a little bit easier for you guys. You can see exactly what archetype or what specific deck is performing the best. So because Hearthstone is a card game and you have to pay money to buy these cards, 
Um, sometimes knowing what deck you want to build or what deck is strongest um, allows you to choose what you're going to build and shoot, be able to plan your purchases efficiently. But more even uh, interesting than this, I think, is they also do detailed matchup data. So they have kind of win rate, win rate ratios of certain archetypes of decks going up against other certain archetypes of decks. And how I could use this as a player is say I'm really having a hard time playing against Weapon Rogue. It's really hard for me to beat Weapon Rogue. I can look at this chart and I can look at what decks are doing really well against Weapon Rogue and maybe I can decide to start playing that. If when I'm playing, I'm seeing a lot of the same deck, I can choose to use a deck that's going to perform better against it and then climb in ranks and become a better player. All right, next, I think now more than ever, not using APIs actually puts you at a disadvantage because research is more important than playing, I think. If you're choosing not to use these, you're basically lowering your skill compared to what it could be. So to kind of illustrate this, this is a screenshot of a 25 player raid in World of Warcraft. And so this is 25 people playing together, trying to beat or defeat a monster. And coordinating 25 people can be kind of a challenge. You're trying to coordinate all the people and you're also trying to see what's happening during the battle and make sure that you're doing everything right to beat the monster. So this screen has a lot of add-ons going on, a lot of things that people have created using the API to help track data that's happening in the game. And I'm going to lay out just a couple of them so you can see uh, how they might help. So first in the middle, we have event encounters. This is kind of saying the important things that are happening in the fight that you need to keep track of or, make or know that's happening. So here we can see that the Celestial Protector switch targets. So I need to know that I need to switch and start damaging that. Down here at the bottom, we have raid performance stats. Not every time you fight these monsters is a win, unfortunately. Sometimes you die and you have to try again. But here you can see exactly what happened during the fight, and you can see if maybe someone wasn't pulling their weight or see what problem spots were and trying to fix those. And last, um, keeping track of raid cooldowns. Raid cooldowns are powerful abilities that unfortunately take, you can only use every so often, maybe every, once every five minutes or 10 minutes. So they're very powerful, but you have to use them very sparingly and you have to know when they're available. So instead of asking one of your players in your raid if it's up or not, this keeps track of your entire party's important raid cooldowns on the side so you can see when they're going to come up and when you can use them. The next way I think APIs have been really important lately is that there's less responsibility for developers to develop fringe features for the user experience. Now that people can do these things, like add things onto the application as it's running, um, if people feel that something for the user experience is missing, they can actually just add it themselves. And there's, for better or for worse, the developers don't need to worry as much about making sure their um, application or game is complete upon um, shipping. So this is an example of an overlay app for a auto battler called Teamfight Tactics. It's the blitz.gg app. And these three highlighted things are things that are added on by the app at the bottom, we have an interactive item cheat sheet, which is keeping track of what items build into what items. And then on the right, we have the real time rolling chances for each tier of units. So if you're trying to get a specific champion and you know what the percentage chance of getting that is. And then at the top, we have the uh, pinned teams for quick access, which is keeping track of powerful compositions currently in the game. So you know exactly with what champions you have and what um, composition you're going for, what pieces you're missing or what you need to aim for. So it helps. this helps you because you're making decisions every minute on a timer in this game. And there's so much data to kind of parse or process that sometimes you won't be able to evaluate all the choices fast enough and you'll end up making suboptimal choices. So this app helps uh, remedy that by giving you more information on the screen at a time. And this one isn't necessarily something that helps you play better, but it is kind of a user experience, a fun feature that was developed from an API. This is for Hearthstone Battlegrounds, which is another auto battler produced by Blizzard. And this is called Bob's Buddy. So essentially what happens in this game is that you have seven monsters that you, as you can see down below, and you're going to be paired up with another player and your seven monsters are going to attack randomly. And either if one of your monsters is left, you win. And if your opponent has monsters left, you lose. So since everything is random, it's very hard at the start of a match to see which way the fight's going to go. But this, uh, with the data from Blizzard and the API, you can actually calculate all of the possibilities that are happening during this match. 
and you can see what your percentage chance of winning is, what your percentage chance of losing is, and even if you might die or if you might kill your opponent. So it's not necessarily going to help you make any decisions differently, but it is kind of a fun user experience where you can know immediately whether or not you won. So if you're interested, or these apps seem kind of like something interesting to you, um, how do I get started building apps with APIs? Um, the easiest way is going to the developer portal for the game you're interested in developing for. Almost every big game company is going to have some sort of developer portal with documentation about the API and also how to get started with getting a key to get access. So we have Blizzard, Riot Games, or Epic Games. But if maybe the apps that I showed towards the end with actually displaying stuff on the screen as you're playing the game, if you're interested in making more of an app than a website, I want to talk a little bit about something called Overwolf, uh, which here's the um, GitHub link for that. So what Overwolf is, is a software development kit aimed for these kind of on-screen as you're playing the game applications. It's developed by Curse Gaming, and it really sets you up with a great framework for building an app for a game if you're interested. It has things such as it will display tool tips on certain features of your app when a user uses it for the first time so they can really understand how to use your app properly. It has different views for the app as well. You can have an in-game app if you want, like an overlay, like the World of Warcraft one. You can build just a regular desktop app like the website I built if that's something that interests you. Um, it has a companion screen for people who are playing games with two monitors to have live data displayed on the side. Or even if you know you want to contribute to the online kind of live streaming community, you can build Twitch extensions for a game you're interested in. So it really helps you very easily build quality apps that are very dynamic and are really enticing for users to use. The only downside to Overwolf is that you actually need to submit a proposal and have it approved before uh, they give you access to install your API and test it. So you need to make sure you have an idea of what you want to do. You can't really go and mess around with Overwolf before you have an idea. So in conclusion, um, I think that the benefits to APIs or the benefits of APIs have really helped A, level the playing field maybe. There's not so much natural skill triumphs over all. You can overcome maybe a natural skill deficit by smartly researching or deciding what you're going to, how you want to get better in making an action plan and accessing this data to get better. I also think that um, these on-screen apps are be, be gonna be the wave of the future. More and more you, people want this data happening in real time so they can make choices as it's happening and try and make the best choices every time. So if you're interested in developing these on-screen apps, I think now is a better time than ever to get started. And that's it for my talk. Thank you so much for listening. If you want, you can reach out to me on Twitter at my handle Svatness. On Instagram, it's SS Johnson, like my name. And finally, my GitHub is Scott Johnson 63 which you can look at my uh, Riot Games API or other projects that I've worked on. And if you want to try out this app that I displayed uh, during my demo for yourself, there is a QR code. I deployed on Heroku. Uh, it does only work right now for North America servers, so you would want to test it out with that. But that's it. Thank you so much for my listening, and I hope you guys have a great day.